we come to the time of offering, I'm going to share just one scripture uh, with you this morning, Proverbs 22 and verse 9, and it says, He who has a generous eye will be blessed, for he gives of his bread to the poor. And as I looked at that this morning, I literally said, Lord, what is a generous eye? What does it mean to have a generous eye? And I believe that it means to look and to be able to see the need, to see those who are in need. And, you know, many times we, we uh, turn our head or we turn away from seeing the need. But God says if you want to be blessed, then you will have a generous eye. And then you will be able to uh, give bread to the poor. And, uh, you know, many times when we come to church and we think about giving of our offerings, a part of our offerings are uh, to bless those and to be benevolent to people who have need. Amen? And as a church, if we're blessed, then we're able to help and to bless other people. And so that is just a part uh, of doing what God has called us to do, to just help one another and uh, to be a part of what God has called us to do. Uh, this morning, there are so many different ways that you can give. They're in your bulletin, but you can give on our tithe.ly app. You can give at the various uh, uh, drop boxes across, <laughs> the word escaped me, uh, drop boxes across the sanctuary and even downstairs in the foyer. Uh, there is a place where you can give, and we want to say thank you for being faithful, and, and uh, God's more than enough. Amen. And so we, we want to thank you for being part of what God's doing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are our source, our supply. And God, help us to have a generous eye, Lord. One that sees the need. One that has a compassionate heart like you, Lord. And help us to, God, reach out to those who are in need that they might see your love and your light in us and that they might be drawn to Jesus. Lord, we give you the praise for it and the honor Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. God has just God's been speaking a lot lately, and I'm excited for you to hear the sermon today. It's just Pastor has heard a word from God and, and get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. You know, Sister Alice, she um, posted something. It was like a repost this last week. And if, if, if you're friends with her on Facebook, you might have seen it. But it was so good. It was so good. And it was talking about worship um, being right. the thing that stirs our heart and gets our heart ready for God's work. I'm telling you, get ready, get ready, get ready. I encourage you in worship today. I encourage you to get your heart ready because when that seed is thrown out, I pray that it falls on good ground. Good ground. And I shared another thought this morning, and um, I was just, I was laughing at myself this week because um, I was thinking about getting ready for this, this worship, and I had these songs, and and um, one of them is called, you know, you know My Name, meaning God, God, you know my name. And I thought, wow, that's a really great, um, you know, place to be and, and being able to know the God of the universe and all this stuff. And I started cracking up because I told myself, oh, like, it would be funny to have a conversation with someone and name drop God. You know how you kind of name drop people, you want to rub elbows, like somebody I know that's famous or somebody that I know is big or has authority or something like that. I don't know a ton of people in my life like that, um, that that are famous as far as the world is concerned, but I started laughing at myself, and I thought, what a conversation that would be, like, oh, you know who I know? God, like, right. the creator, like, I know him, like, we're like this, like, you know, and I started cracking up, and, and the Lord just led me to a, to a verse in the Bible, um, if you go to Isaiah chapter 43, I want to just read it to you. He says this. He says, but now, Jacob, listen to the Lord who created you. O Israel, the one who formed you said, do not be afraid. For I have ransomed you. I have called you by name. You yes. are mine. Yes. And I, I stopped there and I started thinking about it. And, and then God said, how about that? How about that for name dropping? You flip the script and he says, I know you. And he's proud to know you. Amen. You know, like he says, Oh, look at Terry Paul. Look at him. I formed him and, and, and he, I knew yes. him before he was ever born. You know, look at look at Micah King. He 
ins and the outs of you. Who else, I'm, I'm not trying to mean, but who else in any other religion can say, my God is personal. I know him and he yes. knows me. Who else yes. can say that? You know, it, it's, it's not just, we've got the cross and we've got the symbol of the cross, but, you know, he's not, he's not something sitting on the shelf that we can look Amen. at. You know, he's the God, the living God. And like yeah. I said, we've got the cross, but I think that's just a reminder to let us know that he's not there anymore. Amen. He's not there. He's Amen. alive. Yeah. And he yes. knows your name. Come on. He knows my name. Oh, yes. And he called me out when I was nine years old and said, Becca, come to me. And I answered that call. And wow, a God that knows me in and out, my faults even. And you know what? He still loves me in spite of all the crazy things that I have said, done, uh, feel. He loves me and he loves all of me. And I don't have to choose between that. God loves me. I invite you to stir your heart this morning. Stand with us today. Stir your heart this morning and get ready. Get ready for the word of God and worship him. If you just think back of one thing that he's done for you this week, I think that's enough to get excited and say, God, I worship you. I call you out. I'm not ashamed to shout out to the world that you are my God, that you're worthy of my praise, that you're honored in this place. Hallelujah. What if that moment or the moments of this moment matters right here and I'm in your presence, that God changed me. Lord, I lift up my hands to you and I worship you. Father, when I think back this week and I see
15, verse 1. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abraham in a vision, saying, Do not be afraid, Abraham. I am your shield and your exceedingly great reward. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word this morning. You may be seated. You know, sometimes God has a tendency to make us nervous. And he makes us nervous whenever he puts us in a field or a realm where we just totally have to trust in him. And I, as I said, Tuesday morning about 3, 3.30 in the morning. I mean, that was God. That's just when God speaks sometimes. Uh, and I woke up and the phrase, the word of the Lord came saying, that's the phrase It came to my mind. And naturally, being a person of prayer and a person of the word, I said, okay, God, what are you going to tell me? Lord, what, is, what are you saying? What do you want us to know as a people? And, and, and honestly, it was quiet. And God really didn't speak at that point. But I, I believe what God was saying to me and to us is that he has not stopped speaking. In other words, the Lord still speaks now. And he still speaks into our situations and, and into our life. And uh, as I uh, began to run this th thought through my mind, and as I began to uh, look at it the next day, I began to research it. Begin to look at the word of the Lord came saying. And I simply typed that in. And 190 different times in the New King James Version, that came out. 190 times. And I tell you, it takes a long time to look at 190 different times that the Lord came saying. But I was diligent in doing that for the most part. And, and God began to speak to me. And I believe that God primarily, can I get an amen, speaks through his logos or his written word. Amen. But that God also, at various times and sundry times, he speaks a rhema word into our life. And that rhema word is a living word. It is a word that whenever you read it, uh, how, how many knows that sometimes it just comes alive to you? And it speaks into the situation and it speaks into the circumstances of your life. And, and God uh, began to uh, show me things how that multiple times throughout uh, the scriptures as he began to say, the word of the Lord came saying how that it came to life. And as I looked at this scripture, let, let me tell you too that I believe the prophetic word is also a rhema word. That God sometimes speaks things to you and I individually and that God speaks to us corporately as a church. Yes. And, and I begin to look at this and I begin to really just inquire of God. God when your word comes, what comes with it? I mean, you're, you're telling me that the word of the Lord came saying, so God, what are you bringing with this word? What can we expect to receive from God when we hear from his word? And I, and I begin to look at this, and I, I went all the way back to Genesis chapter 1. And, and I noticed that the very first thing that God did was he said, let there be light. In other words, when God speaks, things happen. When God speaks, that uh, the creation begins to move at his word. When God speaks, uh, uh, seasons begin to come to pass. When God speaks, he speaks prophetically and he speaks about the future and he speaks about the present into our life. And when God speaks, he chooses to do something. Continue to look at the word, and then the, the word really spoke into my heart. God began to speak and to tell me, but when I speak, you have to do something with the word. How will you receive the word? 
how will you incorporate it into your life? Can you, you cannot just hear the word without receiving the word. And so I, I begin to look at this, and, and as Jesus spoke and the world came into existence, here are the things that came with it. Light. Revelation. Creation and power. The word of the Lord came saying, and the word brought direction. How many of you need direction in your life? The word brought <coughs> revelation. And when God's word was focused upon, revival came. You, you'll see when uh, Israel had literally lost the word of God. And whenever they found it in the temple, tucked away, and they began to look and to focus upon the word of God and began to read it in the hearing of the people, revival began to occur because of the word of God coming to say something. Peace comes by the word of the Lord. Revelation. Faith. Faith comes by hearing the word of God. So I begin to notice as, as I look at this that uh, giants were defeated because the word of God was active, acted upon. Covenants were struck when the word of God was received by faith. Destinies were changed. Inheritances uh, were occupied as people accepted the word of God and believed God and took a hold of God's word and said it is true and I will believe it for myself. Healing came by the word as it was sent. Blessing, how many want to be blessed, came by the word. Wisdom came by the word. Anointing came by the word of God. Callings. It literally tells us that Jeremiah, the word of the Lord came and that Jeremiah was called. This morning, are we listening for the word of the Lord? And I believe that God is speaking to each one of us. And as, as I read this passage, the very first mention of this uh, phrase that the Lord, the word of the Lord came to Abraham saying, Abram. Now, God, what did, what did he say? He said, do not be afraid. How many knows when the Lord speaks that sometimes our inclination is to be afraid? Because he's an awesome God. Amen. And because when he speaks, we know things change and things move and things react to God's word. And so when he comes to Abram and he begins to speak to him, he tells him, Abram, do not be afraid afraid. In other words, don't be stressed out by what's going on around you. Am I speaking to anybody this morning? Oh, don't be afraid. Uh, today, if you're living in fear, the word of the Lord would come to you saying, do not be afraid. Do not be tied up in your thinking uh, and do not worry about the changes that are occurring, but trust in God. That's what God's saying to us. I may have just ever gotten real with God. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. And you just begin to confess before God what you are and what you're not. Amen. And there's times that us preachers, you know, we get up and we really preach the word of God and we speak boldness and faith because God anoints us to do it. And then sometimes we wake up at 3.30 in the morning and we simply say, God, how? How? How are you going to do it, God? Yes. How are you going to make a way? And, and, and God, how are you going to bring to pass the things that you have promised into my life and into the church? God, how? And I just was open and honest with the Lord. You see, there's times when we don't have the whole picture. There's times when we 
don't know the next step. Can I just be honest? How many ever just been there? And, and we struggle with it, and when we don't know, fear steps in. But God is calling us to walk not by in, in fear, but by faith. Not by sight, but by faith. And so there are things that God has promised us as a congregation. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know how. I don't know how. I have no idea how God will take us and place us out on a new land and build a new church. Now, don't get worried. I didn't say I don't believe God will. What I said was I don't know how. And there's a difference. And so I simply walk by faith one step at a time. And, and, I, and I begin to look at this and, and can I tell you that God is doing it. That God is uh, taking us one step at a time. That it is coming together and we do not have to be afraid. God is still on the throne. You see, not only did he tell Abram, don't be afraid, but he called him by name. And that spoke so much to me. And I didn't tell Becca to sing that song. That's the, the leading of the spirit. But he does know our name. And he does know where we are. And he knows our deepest fears, and he knows our anxieties, and he knows right where we are. And, and when we look at this, God tells him, Abram, Abram, I named you, I called you. There is something about you that is special. I'm speaking to somebody's life today. There's something that is unique that God has called out of you. And don't be afraid. He knew him by name. He knows your situation, your circumstances, the very desires of your heart. And he tells Abram, I'm your shield and your exceeding great reward. In other words, I'm your protector and your provider. Aren't you glad? And throughout scripture, as I begin to look at the times when God would say, the word of the Lord came sing, I looked at Elijah. And the word of the Lord came to him saying, get away and hide by the brook. Now, that just simply does not sound like God to me. For God to say, get up and go hide. But that's what God told him. Because it was at the brook that God would supply and shelter and strengthen. It was at the brook that the raven would come and feed him. And so if we listen to what God has for us and what he says to us, then he'll protect and he'll provide for us. Yes. And then see if you see yourself in this. Then Elijah gets real comfortable at the brook. And with the ravens feeding him. But all of a sudden God said, we're not going to do it that way anymore. Yeah. How many does that upset? Come on. Yeah. It upsets me. Yeah. I'll just be honest with you. We get real comfortable with God doing things a certain way. Come on. But what God wanted to, uh, can, can I just speak something else into your life? You see, the raven was typically a thief of a bird. It would come along and steal the provision. But God used the raven that usually steals in order to provide. Then God all of a sudden says, that path is going to change. And he sends him to a little woman, a Zarephath. Says it, Linda, he's God. And it will come to pass. And
And it may not look anything like what we think it's going to look like. But God will bring it to pass. To pass. And he spoke. And here Elijah goes to this little woman of Zarephath. And, he, and she provides for him. And the way is made up for him to continue. And then Elijah is really a picture of us. Then Elijah, although everything's been taken care of for him, he gets real depressed. God's using him mightily. He's slaying, you know, prophets of Baal, all kinds of things. But yet, at a simple word, who, who will hear the word of God instead of the word of man? At a simple word, Jezebel tells him that she is going to take him out and make him like the other prophets. Come on. And he is hiding in a cave. Now, now notice what happens. As he's hiding in a cave, how many ever had a cave experience? Where it's dark, it's gloomy, you can't see. You don't know what the next step is. Am I preaching to anyone this morning? Amen. And you're in a darkness and a gloom and a funk. And God, what he really needs is the word of God. Amen. What he really needs is to hear the word of the Lord come saying. Amen. But God allows him to experience strong winds, broken rocks, Earthquakes and fire. But yet there was no word of God until a still, small voice. And it brought the revelation and it brought what he needed for the moment. For God to tell him, oh boy, you are not alone. You're not in this thing by yourself. I'm speaking to somebody right now. You're not in this by yourself. God is with you. And there are others who are coming along beside of you. And so Elijah receives this still, small voice. <coughs> Let's go back to Abraham. When God speaks to Abram and he tells him, I'm your shield and exceeding great reward. Abram has the heart of God. And Abram says to God, how are you going to bless me? God said, I'm going to bless you. And Abram says to God, how are you going to bless me, seeing that I have no offspring, that I have no children? You see, the enemy wants to take out your offspring. The enemy wants to uh, make it impossible for you to have a legacy for your children to go on with God. Come on. But what has God spoken? God has spoken, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Look at the stars and try to number them, he tells Abram. And God made a covenant with him. This morning... Will we believe what the word of the Lord has come to say? And it's one thing to say, I believe it, Pastor. And it's one thing to act upon it. And to let it become a part of who we are. Now, as I was looking at all of this, the Lord reminded me of a prophetic word that came two weeks ago. Pastor Patrick Lauder was here and he had been ministering and there was just a thick presence of God. How I many knows that God really speaks whenever his presence is allowed to move? And actually, Diane and Terry's son, Jonathan, came forward with a prophetic word. And, and I, I just want to give that to you today because... It emphasizes what is going to be important for us as a church going forward. So let, here, the setting is that there is an intense distinctness of God's presence. Have you been in those kinds of services? 
You know what I'm talking about. And Jonathan said, in this atmosphere, I heard the Lord start to speak. And he gave me a word for Pastor Brian and Teresa, but it's for the whole house. And as you have broken ground in the natural, there's a breaking of ground in the spirit realm. I may receive that. There's a breaking of ground. And the digging in the natural has been parallel in the digging in the spiritual. And the Lord said, as you dig, you'll come against large rocks that are buried. And they may have been there for generations. But they're not unearthed until someone starts to dig. You see, there are things in our personal life, as well as in a corporate life as a church, that God has identified as being buried underneath and that hinder the flow and the move of God. So uh, that, that, that's where he brings us to. And as you have started to dig, you have ran across already these large stones. And sometimes these rocks are too big for a shovel to deal with. So the Lord said that he has prepared heavy machinery to come in and to pulverize the rocks. Jonathan said, I said, Lord, what's the machinery? And he said, the machinery is worship. It's worship. So I, I want us to understand that God is calling us into a new dimension of worship. That is part of the prophetic word. That is part of the word that the word of the Lord came saying. He is calling us into a new dimension of worship. And he said the house is going to move into a new dimension of worship. Because the vehicle of worship is going to come in and it's going to break up what's been an obstacle in the past. Thank God that he made a way. Amen. And even the obstacles that have not been unearthed until now in the spirit realm, as you dig deeper, those rocks are going to be surfaced. And he's going to begin to pulverize these rocks as you begin to worship. And then he simply said, and what this looks like practically is that sometimes, Pastor Brian, you're going to have to call the church into a worship night on a Monday or a Thursday or a Saturday where you come in and say, we're not going to do anything but worship. Nothing but worship. I know that sounds odd. I know that sounds different. But God is calling us into a new dimension of worship in order to break up the things that have in the past created a blockage. And then the Lord said one last thing. Listen, as you begin to worship, as you dig deep and as those rocks are encountered and the worship begins to break up the rocks, he said, I'm not going to disintegrate the rocks. This is important. He said, I'm going to pulverize the rocks until what's left are stones that will be put into your hand and into your hand to slay the giants in the land. Now hear the, this finish of the prophetic word. Because what you're digging here in Versailles is going to transcend generations. But there are some giants that are going to fall because what's been an obstacle before through worship is your work warfare. It's going to give you stones to take down the giants, says the Lord. Hmm. I'm speaking to a group of people that come to worship.